Uh, yeah, I'll try and make a very basic uh, car mechanic thing. So, move those up, and I want a chip. Um, so I'm going to put a chip in here, but face it that way. And I'm going to put it um, out in front a bit, because that's that's actually the point that the default camera will orbit around, is the is wherever the controller sensor is. So if I put the chip this way, then it will be looking at it from the other way, from the front of the car, um, which isn't what we want. So it kind of, it's to do with the orientation of this gadget. So um, I'll attach to object to the group. So all the gadgets in here will affect the group. I'll put a controller sensor, don't need that. Um, put it onto force possess so that when you start playing, we're already possessing that object and we can like look around with the normal controls like that. Um, let's put it over the ground, make the ground really big, uh, tint it gray, that'll do. Um, and then we want to uh, give it a mover, turn on local space, and then make sure um, this arrow is pointing forwards so that when, this is like your acceleration. So we don't want it to damp it. So if, if this is at zero, we don't want it to actually stop it. Um, we just want it to like push forwards kind of thing. So if I put that onto remote control and use R2 to go into there maybe. So now as I, I push R2, it's moving forward. It kind of stops abruptly and it's not falling to the ground. That's because the group isn't movable. So now it'll respond to physics. And I'll like push it forward, and it's so slow partly because this has friction on it. So if we turn down friction on there, it moves a bit better. Oh, it's because the target. Oh, it's turning it off, isn't it? So what you actually want is that plugged into the forward speed. So this has got a multiply type thing. This means it's modulating five meters per second by the um, how much you're holding R2. So if I hold it more, then it's going more. Uh, and if you put that down again. So now when I let go, it's set to zero and it's got that bit of damping, which means it that's how, how much force it's putting into slowing down to the target speed. And that only wants to affect the X, which is forwards as well. Right, so now we want to be able to break. So if we uh, add the add the R two and the L two, but we want the L two to be kind of negative. So if we use L one and X on here, we can change it to that modulate again. So the L two is multiplied by this value. So if we multiply it by minus one then it will kind of cancel out and that's like the easiest way to uh, so now if we R2 to accelerate and then L2 to break and keep on holding it and it'll start reversing that's the simplest way uh, we just sort those around so that's a minus one again Whoa, so what if we just use R2 to go into there and then use L2 to act on another mover and set that to zero and have it affect the damping. So 
have a maximum damping of like that or something. And then wire L2 into there. So it's multiplying the L2, how, how hard you're pulling it, to, uh, to this. So, and this is the ability for it to uh, slow it down. So I'll just make sure the arrow is pointing out the way it is. So actually, you want that to just affect the X like that. So look at that. So if I accelerate and then brake, it's now not trying to reverse. It's just trying to slow it down. But we only want that to happen if we are actually touching the ground. So we get a impact sensor. And if we're touching something, then we want this to happen. So we'll have a chip that is powered when we're touching something. Um, and we'll put that stuff in there. So now if we're in the air and holding R2 and nothing's happening, now we're on the ground and holding R2 and something's happening. But we can also be on our side. And if I hold R2, then we don't actually want that to go forward. So we also want to know if there's stuff beneath us. So if we set this trigger zone to be a cube and put it below like that, I'm going to press triangle to kind of snap it to the grid. And then I'll adjust it so it's just a thin sliver beneath us. Like that. Like that. And I'll make the grid smaller with up and down. Le hold shift, which is L1, and go up and down. So th th we want this to search for label, which means it will find things like sculpts. Um, yeah, so if we'll just use an AND gate here. So if we're touching something and there's something collidable beneath us, we can make sure of that by going to labels and make sure that's uncollidable. It doesn't matter if it, we can see it and we can do stuff with labels if we want to, but for now we don't need to worry. So, uh, yeah, if this is on its side, then I hold R2. Oh, it's because the, uh, it's because the sides of that are just about touching something. So, oh yeah, um, actually part of it is that this, we scope in here, this is being detected as well. So if we set this to being friend, that's the label, and the trigger zone to ignore friend, then let's see if that works. So it's still lighting up that, um, I think because that trigger zone is just a bit, um, it's like catching the edge. So we do that. Just like bring it in slightly in all the sides. And then now it's not um, kind of activating that. So that means that um, if it happens to fall onto its side, then holding R2 or L2 won't do anything. Um, as if like the it needs traction on the ground. I am going to put that in a chip actually. So this is detecting if it's on the ground. Um, and I'll have a node coming out of it saying it that it is. And we'll just um, wire that into there into there and then just put all the, these into there. So now we can use this chip, we can use whether it's on ground or not for different things without having to go in here and worry about how it's actually working. So um, the cool thing is you can quite easily adjust things uh, using these same principles so that it works um, more realistically or whatever. So uh, with this on ground thing you can make this more granular so you could say if um, if uh, the trigger zone on the back detects ground then it can accelerate but if it only detects a separate trigger zone on the front 
um, then it can't accelerate, but it can steer. So if you're hanging off the back of a cliff and the back side is hanging off the cliff, you can't go forwards and backwards. But if you were hanging off the cliff and the back side was on the on the cliff, you would be able to because you have like a grip on the ground or whatever. Um, you can also do stuff like um, if I hold L1 and then drag, then it gives a fall off. So if um, if the back end was like if it was teetering on the edge and the the back end was only on it slightly then it would have less effect because the, the fall off gives a signal of zero nearer that end and one nearer that end so if you if the ground was like here then it would give like point point zero two um as a signal and then that would affect all of the power of the um acceleration stuff um, so it would have less effect on the steering or the acceleration or whatever. And you could do that for all four wheels or um, however advanced you want to go with it. I'd like to thank Donny the Burb, Keld Bjorns, the common people, and all of my other supporters for making this tutorial possible. Check out tapjars.com to find out how you can support me in helping Dreams creators. Thanks for your consideration, and I'll see you in the next one.